Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and for today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how I take neat and effective notes on my iPad Pro. So before we begin, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Paperlike. Paperlike is an iPad screen protector that mimics the feel of actual paper. The Paperlike feel, hence the name, is purposely developed for professionals, artists, and students who wish to enhance their drawing, note taking, and overall visual experiences with the iPad. Paperlike is specially designed to minimize refractions and has a matte anti-glare finish that I know many of us iPad users would really enjoy. I personally really enjoyed my experience so far. I can really feel and hear the resistance between my pen tip and the screen. This authentic feeling of resistance really helps my control when illustrating or taking notes, making my handwriting and drawing lines much neater. So on that note, I highly recommend that you check them out if you're looking for a better experience with your iPad. And without further ado, let's get on with the video. So for materials, I first have my iPad Pro case. It isn't as protective, but I prefer a more sleek than bulky feel, so I don't really mind. And it has a trifold case, so I can fold the cover any which way I want, depending on my use. When taking notes, I usually have it propped up like this to relieve the tension on my wrist and help my posture. Then I have my second generation Apple Pencil. I'm looking to purchase a silicone case since the grip feels really uncomfortable on my hand sometimes, but for now it is naked. Now onto the apps that I use. The only note-taking app that I use is GoodNotes 5. I import all these slideshows, worksheets, and resources into this app so that I can keep track of all my notes and assignments. I also use a couple of Google apps in order to send the resources over to GoodNotes. All my teachers use Google Classroom, so I just open the files through Docs or Drive and import it into its assigned folder in GoodNotes. Now for the tools that I use in GoodNotes. So the first tool I love to use is the split screen option. When taking notes, I like to reference the slides or textbook pages that provide more information. And in order to use these external resources, I would drag the tab to the left of my notes to split the screen. This is such a great tool to not only recall information, but images and graphs. The next tool is the paper that I use. I use the A4 graft black paper from Janice Studies. She provides a lot of helpful templates, but I just go with the simple black paper. For the paper setup, I always divide my paper in half. I actually started experimenting with this strategy last year before my transition to digital notes, and I found it so helpful. I'll go more in depth about it later on in the video, but I basically divide the page evenly using a 0.4 millimeter white line. But when I have to add another page, I usually just copy and paste this lined page from another set of notes because it is such a pain to get a perfect line straight through. But moving on, for the pen type, I use the ball pen. I am not a fan of the fountain and brush pen, so I don't use those often. And I also like to use the zoom tool. I started using it only recently and it is such a big help. I don't really have to drag around the page as much since this does it for you and it makes my handwriting much neater. Finally, for the colors, I obviously go with the lightest shade that the color spectrum can offer. I love the look of bright colors on black paper since it accentuates my notes and makes it look so much nicer. I don't usually use the highlighter tool since it comes off as a bit awkward on black paper. I don't really know how to explain it, but I just don't like the look of it, but I, I use it sometimes, just not as often. So now for my actual notes setup, let us begin with the header. So first, I start by erasing the first three or four boxes worth of line to make the space for the header. 
I select the 1.5 millimeter size and zoom in as close as I can to write out the header in all caps. I usually make the letters three boxes high and one box long, and afterwards I use the lasso tool to enlarge it and fit the length of the paper. Now for the actual writing content. I start out with a subtitle and select a different color and change the size to 0.9 millimeters, which is the pen size I use for the rest of my notes. I use a thick pen because I have really bad vision, so it's harder to see if I use a skinny one. For the information under the subtitle, my go-to layout are bullet points since it helps condense and organize the information much better. The rest really depends on the subject at hand, but for the purpose of this video, I'll show you how my psychology notes usually go. So for these set of notes, I select another color because I begin by defining vocabulary and keywords. I write out the vocab and then switch the color to white for the definition. I repeat this for however many vocab is under the section and then we proceed to the basic information. I use white for the rest of the notes until I come across another word that can be used to summarize the entire bullet. This word does not have to be defined, but I just want to remember it so that I can recall information better. And to emphasize the importance of this word, I will use the same color as the vocab to write it out. Last and definitely not least is the images. I am a huge supporter of including pictures and other visuals into your notes. In order to add visuals to mine, I usually copy and paste them from the notes or outline and draw them myself. I try to draw them myself more often so I can retain the information better, but whenever I'm short on time, I just copy and paste from the slides next to me. So yeah, these are how I currently take my notes. It's actually not that much different than how I took them in AP Bio class last year when I had an actual notebook and pen. But reflecting back on my notes, I can definitely space them out more since it does come off as a little too condensed, but other than that, I think it is a great way to make your notes neat and effective. I can definitely highlight the color use and split layout as the two most unique and effective touch to my notes. Since I can alternate between colors much faster on an iPad, I started using more colors to underline the more important facts. This helps you find information faster and retain the important ideas more often. The split layout with the line in the middle helps in that it makes your notes look less overwhelming. Having notes in columns makes it easier to read since it is concentrated on one area of the page. And in addition to that, when it comes to annotating or inserting images, it is such a lifesaver. You can annotate and add images on the side by copying one column onto another page. I haven't actually tried this method before, but I do plan on doing this method when I start to study for my midterms and final exams. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this was very informational and helped you guys a bit in taking notes on the iPad. I am fairly new to this whole iPad digital note taking thing. So if you do have tips, please leave them down below. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.